Hey everybody, welcome back. We wanted to keep going on that topic that we discussed in our last video. We got a lot of feedback saying that our tests that we did were invalid because, uh, for a variety of reasons, but for a lot of them were things like uh, the guns were not accurate enough, or that there was wind involved, or that we weren't using steady rests, or we were using low quality ammunition. And we understood all of these variables going in and essentially what we're trying to prove is that when you add all of these variables together of anything that makes the rifle less precise, that is what causes non-normal distributions. It's been a long time assumption that groups are normally distributed and we needed to prove or disprove that in order to find the correct statistics model. And so we, we disproved that they're normal. We proved they're they're non-normal, and so that gives us this, the right statistics model. So now when we go out and we shoot the most accurate groups we can from our best guns, from indoor ranges and things like that, and we want to compare these really fine details, now we have the right model to do that. There was one criticism in particular that uh, caught my eye that the uh, barrel heat would have affected the test. And that, that goes in with all those other variables that we explained that that is actually what we were trying to test is lots of variables. Um, barrel heat was one of them, but it did make me wonder, does barrel heat affect precision? If your barrel gets super hot, do your groups open up? And we have the tools to answer that. So let's dive in. So in front of you, you are looking at the target that we shot with our 6.5 Creedmoor. Our first shot was at this circle here. Our first group was here. And then following that, we started in the top left and shot left to right, top to bottom. And so we know what order our groups were in. And so the, the first naive thing or the most simple thing we can do is just measure all the groups and then go and throw that into a spreadsheet and put a graph on that. And uh, you can see that the trend line shows that the groups are slowly growing, but you can see it's a pretty jagged line. The, the trend line goes up, but if you look at the R squared, it's 0 0.045. You're looking for more like 0.95, so we're, we're in the wrong side. However, this is rudimentary. We just barely developed a, a very robust method for comparing accuracy. So let's come back here to our group comparison tool. And I have selected the first 25 shots. Actually, let's start with the first 50 shots and the last 50 shots. So I went through, so this is the exact same target in here twice, but this one only has the first 50 shots marked, and this one only has the last 50 shots marked. Come down and we can see we've got these scatter plots. Uh, they don't appear to be particularly different. We come down, uh, neither of them are normally distributed as we expect, because we've seen that before already, so no surprise there. The standard deviations are almost identical between the two. And if we go down, um, no significant difference found. P is 0.497, which is uh, canonically, there is absolutely no difference. But let's, let's do this again, but let's just do the first 25 rounds and the last 25 rounds because perhaps it only took 25 rounds to heat it up to a point that was detrimental. So let's let's compare these. Uh, same thing here where we've got the first 25 here and nothing else. And then here we've got the last 25 and nothing else. We go down, we've got two scatter plots. Uh, we're dealing with smaller sample sizes, so it's not as nice. Um, our standard deviations are slightly different this time, not by much, but if we come down a little more, we can see no significant difference found. Our p-value is slightly lower, but not enough to make a difference. It's still not significant. However, there is one interesting thing to note. On these scatter plots, you'll see this x is the center of our group, but this x is our aiming point. And then on this one, our group center is here, but our aim point is here. So if we look at this, this guy is about, if I remember right, um, nearly an inch over. So if we go back and look at our target again, you can see our first group straight down, and then the subsequent groups are down, straight down from our dot, our aim point. 
But then as we get later in the target, they actually start shifting over a little bit. So what we learn from this, and this is only ap applicable to this rifle, is that heat did not cause more dispersion, did not cause the groups to get bigger. However, it did cause our zero to shift. So that could be that there is some residual stress in some of the components, or it could be that some of the components, such as the rail or the barrel or the rings or something, they're, they're shifting as they heat up. So that's something interesting to consider. We can also look at our 223. Not as good of an example because we kind of use crappy ammo in this, but we did not see a similar shift in this. As it heated up, it kind of remained in the same aim point. We need to repeat this with high quality ammo because there's just a lot of noise in here. We also got another piece of great feedback that we should be able to use this software to identify how many rounds do you really need in order to find significance. So let's start with an example of the CZ455 with the Norma ammunition and the same rifle with the SK ammunition. So we've seen this before where we shot 100 rounds of each. Uh, we get a scatter plot. We get our histogram showing it's not normal. We get some stats coming out of it. Um, and we found a significant difference. And P is not just less than 0.05, it's pretty close to zero. So we have extremely high confidence that, that these two are different and that the one is more accurate than the other. But the question is, how many shots did we really need to fire to, to find that? And what we can do is just take our 100 round group and remove one shot at random and rerun the stats on it. Do that 100 times. And then we can do that all the way down. Here we're removing 52 shots. We have two 48 shot groups but we do this 100 times where we pick 52 random shots, remove them all the way down till five shots. We've removed 95 of the shots from each group. And so we have two five shot groups to compare at the very bottom here. And what we can see is we're getting the correct answer pretty much all the time, all the way till around 60 to 70 rounds is where it starts to drop off. And it's not until way down here where we occasionally, 1% of the time, get the absolute wrong answer, where it says the, the worse ammo is actually more accurate. Because that's possible because our sample size is so small. But for most of the time, we're seeing that we're getting the correct answer or we're getting no answer. The blue section is that the data was not significant. We don't know if one was more accurate than the other. This tool is also useful to show that there is a little bit of danger in using small sample sizes. So I'm going to compare the M4 with the MDRX. Same shooter, same optic, same ammo. So they're good comparisons and same thing. Shot 100 shots of these. But in this case, no significant difference was found. P is 0.26, so we accept the null hypothesis. Or in other words, we say there's no difference. But if we come to the same graph, you can see that, again, we're getting the right answer of they're not different until we start to get down to around 72. And then we actually start to get a significant answer sometimes, uh, not a lot of the time. And then once we get down to around 30 rounds, we're actually getting the wrong answer. Some, well, I mean the wrong answer in this case because there's no significant difference there really either one is the wrong answer because they're they're not significant but this demonstrates that if you're trying to compare off of five shot groups or in this case off of you know even 20 30 shot groups you may get a significant difference found but it's a lie because you don't have enough data we suspected that some of you would be angry at us doing science. So that's how it usually goes, but we welcome constructive criticism or any feedback. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, so you can catch our future videos. We, we will just keep doing science uh, no matter how mad any of y'all get.